Welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're not making soap, we're going to make lotion, a very soothing lotion using oatmeal. And so for the fragrance, I'm going to be using oatmeal, milk and honey. And this is the number two version from Wholesale Supplies Plus because it's just such a gentle, wonderful, yummy scent. I mean, you can really smell the honey in there. I love it. And I just thought it went with today's soothing lotion recipe, which I will be sharing down in the description box below. And as I'm making it, I will be talking through what I'm doing. Um, so one of the special things about today's recipe is I'm going to be infusing my water portion with oats whole oats and uh, I'll talk you through how I'm doing that and if you don't want to do that there's another way you can add colloidal oats to the water um, portion you could do both if you want double oats but uh, I just think that this is such a wonderful simple and soothing lotion and we're coming into gardening season spring it's it's we're having like an early spring here in Tennessee. The daffodils are up. At the time of filming this, it's March. This pro video probably won't come out till April, but it's early spring. And so, you know, it's time to get our hands in the dirt and get gardening and everybody's thinking about planting. And so with that, the bugs come out. You can get real itchy. I know when we do burn piles and we're cleaning up the yard, I get real scratched up and itchy arms. And so this lotion to me just really, and like this is the time to do a very soothing body lotion. Uh, and it can also be a face cream. I think this is gentle enough to use on your face also. And of course I'm doing a fragrance oil today. You could do essential oils or you could leave this unscented if you wanted extra gentle. So with all that being said, I need to get my whole work surface and all my equipment sanitized and prepped and ready to go and we will come back and make some soothing oatmeal lotion. All right, so we're back. Everything's been sanitized and we're ready to go. And uh, let me tell you what I've got going on here on the burner. The first thing I need to do to make my oat infused water that I wanna use for this lotion is bring my water up to a boil and then I'm going to put the oats in there and let it sit for several minutes. Then I'm gonna strain it out and that will be my oat water that I will use for the lotion portion. I also have some colloidal oats that I'm gonna be adding in there just to show you how if you don't wanna make oat water, you can just add colloidal oats. So the oat water is the way to get a super butter smooth lotion. So what I need in the final end is 240 grams of oat water. So what I have here is 300 grams of water that I'm gonna bring up to a boil because I know the steam is gonna let off some of the volume here. So I went ahead and did 300 grams. I'm gonna get that boiled and then I will measure it after we get it all strained. And if I need to add a little bit of plain distilled water, we can do that. But I wanted to make sure I had, you know, a good amount after it gets done, you know, boiling water steams off pretty quickly when you bring something to a boil. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is get the oats steeping and then while it's steeping, we'll come back and measure out our butters and oils. And then we'll put the double boiler on here and keep the water warm while we melt the butters and you know, all the good stuff. But first, a watch pot never boils, so I'm gonna turn the camera off and let this come to a boil and we will come back when it's time to add the oats. All right, we're back with boiling water. Let me turn the burner off and pull this down. And now I'm gonna real quick put in 30 grams of whole oats. Any kind of oats you like. It could be steel cut, I got the flat cut here. 30 grams. I'm gonna just stir it in here and let this steep for a good little while, actually. Let's pop it back up here and let it simmer. I think that'll be good. So this, I turned this off, but it's still got a lot of radiant heat going on. And uh, let's just let that simmer. Give it about five minutes and we'll be back. All right, we're back. It's time to strain our oats. So I've got my colander and this is a brand spanking clean cotton cloth. It's just a flour sack cloth. You could use cheese cloth. This is just what I had available. So that's what I'm using. Just any good clean cotton. You want to use cotton or linen when you strain any, you know, bath and body products or food products for that matter. So there it is. I'm going to strain this all off. And then after this is done straining, while the water is still hot, when I pull the cheesecloth away, I'm gonna mix in my colloidal oats into the very hot water to help it really dissolve in there. So we'll let this go ahead and strain. All right, 
there is our very hot oat water. And now I'm going to go ahead and add some colloidal oats in there because I want a double oat lotion. But you can, again, you can do either or. You can do this, and this is wonderful, and you'll still get wonderful oat properties. You can do colloidal oats only. It's still great. I'm going to do both. You could do both too. This is a half tablespoon measure, which is odd. So it's one and a half teaspoons is what this is. And I'm not going to do this all the way full. Uh, so I haven't weighed this out. I'm not exactly sure, but that's about three quarters of the way full. I will call this about one teaspoon of colloidal oats is what I'm putting in here. Let's get that stirred in. Actually, I'm gonna pull my stick blender over. Let's get that really buzzed in there well. There we go. There is some very oaty water to make our lotion with. It smells good in here. I love the smell of cooked oats. So now, oops, now let's get our scale over and get our butters and oils measured so we can get them melting. All right, so get my container on here get it teared out. And what we need is 60 grams of hard oils or butters and 60 grams of liquid oils or butters. So today for my hard butters, I'm gonna use a combination of mango and shea butter. So I need 30 grams, this is my mango butter, which I love in a lotion, it's so nice. And I need 30 grams of mango Here is my shea butter, 30 grams of shea going for a total of 60 grams. I got 61 grams, but that's okay. It'll be a little extra buttery. So now it's time for our liquid oils. Okay, and today I'm gonna do a combination of sunflower oil and avocado oil. So first we're gonna do 30 grams of sunflower It's just a nice light oil and lotion. There we go. And 30 grams of avocado oil. And I got this from Soper's Choice. So it's right there. <laughs> so going up to 60. All right, those are the oils and butters. And now to this container, I'm gonna add my emulsifying wax. All right, and today I'm using the Soft and Silky E-Wax. This is from Be Scented. There's a couple different distributors that have, carry it. Um, Wholesale Supplies Plus, Nature's Garden, Brambleberry, they all carry really great emulsifying waxes. But this is the one I'm using today, and it'll be the same measurement no matter what type of E-Wax you're using. Uh, so 24 grams of emulsifying wax right on in here. All right, now we bring over my little low-tech double boiler, which is just a hot plate with a saucepan. And I'm gonna put these in here. And so we're gonna let the oils melt. We're gonna keep this at a simmer and I can just keep adding distilled water to keep this up to um, the weight that we need. So no big deal there. Now that we've got all the oat concentrate in here, adding more water doesn't dilute the oats at all. It, the oats will stay the same. All right, so while we're waiting for this last tiny little bit of mango butter to melt, <laughs> it's got the highest melting point in here, I wanted to show you, I get asked a lot about coloring lotions and body butters. Yes, you can color them, absolutely, but make sure it's a skin safe mica. So uh, one of the things I love about Nurture Soap is that their labels are very inclusive. So let me see here. For instance, all right, let's start with this one, Red Vibrance, which I love this color, and I'm not gonna color my soap today, but these are good examples of how, you know, make sure you read your label. So Red Vibrance says, uh, safe for lips, eyes, external use, and bath bombs. So lips, eyes, you're good to go in a lotion with this one, but Trial by Fire says very boldly for soap only. So this one, you don't wanna use in a lotion. So just really read your labels. Love that about Nurture Soap that they put that information on here. So that's just a word to the wise. And there are liquid colorants also, and the same thing. Just read the label, make sure it's a skin safe product. All right, we are fully melted here. Time to turn this off and pull my pots off of the burner. Make sure your 
safe when you pull them off. This is this is very warm because you know it was at a simmer. And then here is my beautiful oat water. And I need to remeasure this now because it's been simmering to make sure we are at 240 grams in here. All right, so now I'm gonna pull my spatula out of here and it's time to add the two, the water phase and the oil phase together. And we'll get ready for the cool down and we have a couple more ingredients to add after the cool down. Oh, it's so pretty. I love the magic that happens when the emulsifying wax hits the water phase. Now I'm gonna put my stick blender in here. Burp it, get the little air bubbles out because I'm not trying to fluff this up into a body butter. I just want it emulsified. And I'm just gonna give it a quick couple of pulses here. Let's take the temperature and see where we're at right off the burner. 142. So the good news is we can go ahead and add our next ingredients because uh, I'm using the preservative OptiFen today and you have to add that below 176 degrees or yeah 176 so let's get this up here tear out my scale and let's get on to the cool down ingredients which is the first ingredient is my vitamin E oil this is not a preservative but it is an antioxidant and it's really good for your skin so I do love to add this into lotions and we need three grams of vitamin E oil in here there we go and then the next teeny little ingredient here, this is glycerin. And you can add it in your water phase. I choose to have it off to the end here. I need four grams of vegetable glycerin. And that's just very emollient. It really gives a nice feel to the finished lotion. So four grams that I've already pre-measured off. All right. And last but not least, the fragrance that we're using today. And I am gonna be doing the fragrance at 2% usage rate. So I need eight grams of fragrance oil in here. And let's, I will, after I get this measured, I cannot talk and measure at the same time. All right, there we go. That is it for the ingredients in here. Let me talk about the um, OptiFen for a minute. I got mine, you know, from Brambleberry. Uh, there's Germ Germal, Germal Plus. There's several different preservatives, and they each have different usage rates and different temperatures that are um, going to be important to know. So uh, for OptiFen, the suggested usage rate is 0.3% to 1.3%, so that range. And so today I am doing a rate of 0.8% is the rate that I'm doing with my three grams in here. So just so you know what I'm doing, um, I just kind of like to go in the middle of the lowest extreme and the highest extreme, so that's where I parked my car at. Let's get these blended in. All right, now I just need to let this cool. I'm going to come back every 10 or 15 minutes, give it a quick buzz with my stick blender until it starts cooling down. All right, and today we're gonna to do something new for me with lotions. I've been asked this a lot about the pH of my lotions, and we are gonna pH test strip this. Um, these are not the most accurate way to test pH. It's a good ballpark, and um, I know this is a stable recipe. They have really great uh, submersion pH monitors. I just haven't invested in one. I'll leave a link down below. I got these on Amazon. And let's go ahead and take a pH strip test. So it comes in this little handy dandy container and pull it out. And you wanna be sure not to touch the pH side of it, the little test strip side. Okay, and it has the color guide starting from one, flip it over all the way up to 14. And that's your little guide. So we're gonna dip this and then hold it up to the colors and color match. So I'm gonna run it out, run it across, give it a second and let's take a look here. To me, sorry, it's bobbing around a lot. It is looking, sorry about the glare, it's looking really close to five. Definitely not six. So the mid-range ones, it's between a four and a five. And the range for lotion is 4.5 all the way up to seven is a really good body lotion range. And we are right in there. 
So this is a very simple, inexpensive way to test your pH. Uh, there Again, there are meters that you submerge in a water solution and then dip it in the product, which has been diluted, and they are very, very accurate. But for a good ballpark, I think these are wonderful. And so the pH on this is perfect for a body lotion. So let's get back to letting it cool. All right, so while we're waiting for this to completely cool down, let me show you the jars I'm using today. I have a four ounce jar and an eight ounce jar, and this gets so thick and creamy, I'm gonna pipe it in the jars. It looks really beautiful um, for this. So today's recipe is a thick cream pot style uh, lotion, and then I will be doing another video with my oat water concentration uh, to make a pumpable version, a lighter, a little bit lighter, more fluid version. But today we're going thick and creamy, so this has to cool down quite a bit before we can get it in a piping bag. All right, we're back, and this is almost all the way cooled. It's just a little bit warmer than room temperature, but look how gorgeous and thick this is. I mean, it is absolutely luscious. So I can put this in the piping bag now and get it in my containers. I won't put the lid on until it's completely cooled down to room temperature, but we're very, very close. And so I have a piping bag here. This is an 18 inch piping bag that I'm just gonna clip the tip on this. I'm not gonna do a piping tip if you waited till this was all the way cool, you could put a piping tip on there if you wanted. But since it's not whipped and I'm not, you know, trying to go for fancy design, I just want to pipe it in the um, containers because it makes it's a lot less messy when you're working with something this thick. This is just a very easy way to get it down in your container. So let's go ahead and get it in the piping bag. Look at how gorgeous that is. And that oatmeal, milk and honey smells really nice. I did fragrance this at 2%, but it is very dominant, that fragrance. If I had it to do again, I would do 1%. You know, um, go shy if you want. It smells great, and since this is gonna be for personal use and family, I don't mind. But if I make this again, especially with that fragrance, now that I know it's a nice, strong fragrant oil, I would go at 1% to fragrance this. Just saying but it does smell lovely. Now, let's just pop this out of here and we're just gonna clip the tip of the piping bag here and just let that be our tip. We're not doing a fancy one. And one way, and you can do this with soap too, if you have your piping bag full and you wanna get it down and not have air pockets, get something flat. Um, so I just use this, it's just a wooden flat end spatula and it kind of helps to push everything down. So you don't, nobody wants to waste product and this helps get everything down in the end so that you don't miss anything. Now let's fill up these little jars with this gorgeous thick lotion. jarred up so the gloves can come off. I'm just going to let these finish cooling for a little bit before I pop the lids on and we will get to the labeling of these gorgeous little jars of goodness. And in the meantime, I figured I'd give you a product demo as best I can here on video without you actually touching the product. But okay, so there it is. It feels absolutely buttery, creamy. You can't feel the colloidal oats in there at all. They're completely dissolved in, so there's no grit with the colloidal oats. And it feels so soothing. Very emollient, very rich. This is a deeply moisturizing cream pot, so this is not super light, but if you have dry, thirsty skin, let me tell you, <laughs> it's good. No shine, it doesn't leave a greasy feel at all. It's just silky, silky smooth. I love the finish on this absorbs really quickly. So I'm super delighted with the finish on this. It just feels outstanding. And uh, so we're gonna let these cool and then we will come back with labels. All right, we're all cooled and it's time to get the lids on and the labels. This is the label that I'm using today. There's the number I'm using. These are one and a half by five inch craft paper labels. I got these from onlinelabels.com and I use their Maestro Label Designer. If you buy from them, you get a year long subscription to their designer. 
And so that's what I use to design my labels. Now, this font in the middle I purchased on Etsy. So, um, and I cannot remember where I got it, but uh, go on Etsy, look up, you know, soap labels, lotion labels. There's a ton of stuff on there. So I purchased this font and you can upload your own things to Maestro, including your logo and things. So here is the label already done. And I'm gonna get this with my little lid. And here is my pro tip. <laughs> if you've seen any of my lotion videos before, you know that I have this very fancy pro tip to keep your bottle from rolling away on you. I love, <laughs> I love using this, just two little spatulas. It holds my jar steady, super low tech, and it gets the job done. I'm actually not going to be uh, shrink banding these because these are going right up to my room for use, but I will show you the shrink bands that I would use if I was. This size shrink band fits the 8 ounce and the 4 ounce jars from Wholesale Supplies Plus. If you can see it right there, it is the 115 by 55, and they have a little perforated edge on them. If you can see that, it's really nice. So you pop it on here, you shrink band it down, and then it's easy to take off with the little um, perforated edge. But I am not shrink banding these today. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you give this recipe a try. It is luscious. And if you do, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. We'll have a fluid pumpable one coming up in just a little bit. But uh, thank you for being here today and I hope you have a wonderful day.